Welcome back to the Fellowship of the Things. In this episode, I wanted to show that IoT can be used to solve everyday problems. Whether it's that you don't want to wait for your coffee in the morning, or you want to check on your house when you're away for the holidays, connected devices can solve that problem. For me, you're not Sean. No, Sean's busy. For me, when I go to the grocery store, I can never remember what I needed. I always forget to write a list, and I wish that I could call my fridge so that it could tell me what I'm missing. So this week, we decided to modify this fridge to solve Sara's remarkably specific problem. When you want to find out what's in the fridge, all you have to do is send it an email. The fridge has its own Gmail address, and every 30 seconds, it checks this email, it gathers all of the unread messages, and then it searches the body of those messages for the phrase, what's in the fridge? Then it triggers a subroutine that uses the Raspberry Pi camera to take a picture of everything in the fridge. And now it's got three separate picture files sitting in a folder. The script collects all of those images, attaches it to an email, grabs the recipient email address, and uses it as the new target email address so that it's sending a reply straight back to whoever asked it for the contents of the fridge. As far as the mechanical parts for this goes, we decided to go with Actobotics. It happened to be that the width of this fridge was exactly the right size for the channels to just sit right in, and I've used two channel slider kits for this, as well as a 12-volt precision gear motor to provide all of the motion here. Another thing we used was a limit switch so that the Raspberry Pi knows when it's hit the top of the channel and the bottom of the channel and it doesn't try to go past that. The heart of the electrical system is the Raspberry Pi. It's a pretty easy platform to do things like sending pictures, taking pictures, as opposed to something smaller like the Thing or even an Arduino with an Ethernet shield. And we're able to see what it's doing because we have the seven inch touchscreen display connected to the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi camera is really easy to use with the Raspberry Pi. In fact, there are a couple of utilities included that make it really easy to just from the command line, snap a photo and save it to the hard drive. We have one of our laptop power supplies sending 12 volts to our motors and five volts to the Raspberry Pi and I wanted an elegant way to connect that. So I'm actually just powering the Pi through its USB micro port, and I have a little pigtail going from there to a USB breakout, and then out to our laptop power supply. All of the limit switches are connected to the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi directly, and then the motors are being controlled by one of our serial motor controllers, and that's talking to the Raspberry Pi over the Raspberry Pi's UART, which is also really simple to talk to. The whole program runs on a Python script, and the Python script can directly address the GPIO pins to get the limit switch positions, and it can directly address the Ethernet port, obviously, in order to send the emails, as well as the camera, and even the motor controller. UART through Python is pretty straightforward. I chose to use email for this project as opposed to giving it its own Twitter account or doing it over text messaging because email, first of all, is platform agnostic. So I can access email on my cell phone, from a laptop, no matter which operating system it's running, from basically any device. The other nice thing about email is that it already has a way of sending attachment files. So putting photos in an email is a no-brainer. Uh, finally, the nice thing about email is that it's private. So not everyone on Twitter has to watch me ask my fridge what's in it, and not everyone on Twitter needs to see what's in my fridge. So this is a really specific application for a not so huge problem if all you want to know is what's in your fridge. But this technology does have some more practical applications, like security. If you needed to know that things weren't changing and you needed to see a picture of it, this could be a good solution. Also, for monitoring experiments or projects where you don't want to be in the same room as whatever it is you're looking at, like a pressure vessel or something that's creating dangerous fumes, you could use it for that. This could also be used as a more versatile situation, so you don't really need specific sensors. If all you're looking for is a picture to see what's happening, you could put it somewhere and then change the project that you're looking at, put it somewhere else, so it's got a lot of versatility. In fact, you could take this exact same project and just put kittens in there instead of food, and then you'd have kitten pictures no. on demand. No, that's not, that's not what would happen. The kittens would suffocate, and that's not a very good... Don't do that. 
but do keep sending us all of your feedback. We love what we've been seeing on the previous videos. We love all of the comments. We love hearing about your ideas, what you would use these projects for. We love seeing you replicate our ideas. We saw a lot of people make the cloud lights from the last episode, so I love seeing that. Send me your thoughts, your questions, your feedback, your projects. We love hearing from you. Until next time.